primaries going on today, and everybody is thinking about how do we fix things politically, and I, I, that is all important. But I'm telling you, um, things are so far out of control. If we don't fix ourselves and get right with a, a higher power, we're in real trouble. Um, Peter Lilbeck is the author of George Washington's Sacred Fire. You must buy this book. And uh, Jerry Falwell Jr., Chancellor of Liberty University, is uh, with me, and we're talking about social justice because now we have the EPA, according to the, uh, the faith-based initiative, they're going to merge the EPA with churches and then offer them money to help green their churches, etc. It's insidious. Well, when I hear the Obama administration talking about eliminating the charitable deduction, it just makes me suspicious that the next step is to take the place of the church. Uh, even when George Bush introduced his faith-based initiative, many of us were skeptical, skeptical because even though his goal was to let religion and private associations do help the poor because they could do it more efficiently than the government, there's still those strings that come with government sure. assistance. And so we, we shunned it. We have a home for alcoholics that we've operated for 60 years. Check this out. A home for unwed mothers. We never took a penny. But this, this proposal goes beyond that. And it reminds me of what King George was doing in Colonial Virginia. He required all the citizens of Colonial Virginia to be members of the Anglican Church, to pay tithes to the church. And he appointed the archbishop of the church. So he was helping God. He was doing something good, supposedly. But the, the real goal was power over the citizens of the state of Virginia. Thomas Jefferson, after the, revelation, after the revolution, seized all the property that the church had bought up and sold them. But we, we didn't change the law until 2002. We filed a federal lawsuit because we, even until 2002, churches in Virginia could not incorporate because Thomas Jefferson wanted to make it impossible for the government to ever use the church as a tool of tyranny again. See, Peter, this is the interesting thing, and this is what I love about your book, because anybody who, if you say that George Washington was a deist, about this much of your book is covering all his words. I mean, everything that, it is such a distortion uh, of what's going on. And, and they were, when they said in the one reference of notes in Virginia, uh, the one reference of separation of church and state, it was to protect the people from an out-of-control, government-controlled church. Protect right? the church from the government, right. not it was, the other way around. Right. It was yeah. to protect the church from the government and the citizens from a government-run church. Yeah. And that's what we're, we're getting into now. Um, how, you know, when, when you got here, the guy you were traveling with today um, said to me before him, he said, that you just got an email from some pastor um, that said, I'm getting so many calls about your book because people listen to my radio show or watch television last night. And I said, read this book and get one for your pastor. He said, I will not read a book uh, that Glenn Beck recommends. Um, it, it, how, do, how do we get people? I mean, am I wrong to say we need to reach out to our pastors and have them decide. You stand for individual rights or collective rights. Well, first of all, Glenn, let me say this. My book was like 500,000 on the list of Amazon, and it's <laughs> number two now after right. you've commended it. So you have quite a sweeping influence on our culture. Well, and I hope your influence will really impact our culture in this area. And that is we need to remember what the scriptures say about justice. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that the state owns property or that the church owns property. What we teach our students is to follow what the Word of God says. And you had the book of Acts up a little bit earlier. Well, if you go on to Acts chapter 5, there's an extraordinary story where the Apostle Peter is dealing with Ananias and Sapphira, who had sold their property, brought the money to the church, and if you remember the story, they were struck dead. And the reason is, is that they had claimed to give 100% of their proceeds and they kept back a lot for themselves. They were lying to the church, lying to God, lying to the Holy Spirit. But listen to what the Apostle Peter said. This is the CEO of the church. He said, when you had that land, was it not yours? Before you sold it, was it not your property? Why have you lied to God? In other words, Peter makes it absolutely clear. We have no right to your land. We have no right to your property. You willingly took and sold it and gave it. Your crime is you lied about what you did. But Peter believed in individual property rights. 
Why? Because the Ten Commandments, which you remember you said children are allowed to read them anymore in our schools. Our Supreme Court said they're too dangerous. Well, they're dangerous for a socialistic government. You know why? Because the Eighth Commandment says, thou shalt not steal. That means you have a right to your property. God says you own it. And if you put it in its positive form, thou shalt not steal means you are to preserve your property and the property of your neighbor. You should run. No, seriously, you should run for office. <laughs> Back in just a second. <laughs>